Hey everyone, I have a personal announcement to make, which is that I wrote a book. It's coming out on April 13th, and it's called The Scout Mindset, which is my term for the motivation to see things as they are and not as you wish they were. So basically trying to be intellectually honest and objective and actually curious about what's true. It's part of the central metaphor of the book, which is that very often we humans are in what I call a soldier mindset, where our motivation is to defend our pre-existing beliefs from any evidence that might threaten them. And so scout mindset is an alternative to that. And the book is about how to be more of a scout and why that's something you should want to do. Um, I'll put a link in the description to the book, but I thought it would be fun to do a series of videos where in each video I highlight one of the ideas from the book. And in today's video, I wanted to talk about a piece of common wisdom, which I hear all the time and I'm sure you've heard, um, and which I think is wrong. And that is that if you want to be influential and persuasive, then you basically have to be a soldier, uh, that you should cultivate as much certainty as you can muster in your beliefs. And you should never admit that you're not sure about anything or that you were wrong about something because you know people don't want to hear that. They want certainty. Um, that's what makes them look up to you and respect you and follow you. So this is the standard advice you'll hear for people who want to be leaders, like, like CEOs, or, or for people who want to be experts, seen, seen as experts, such as consultants or lawyers. And I always just assumed this common wisdom was probably correct and was like, huh, it's too bad that there's this trade-off in the world where you have to choose between being intellectually honest or uh, being influential. That's too bad. But then I did a bunch of research for my book and realized, actually, it's not true. Uh, being a scout, being intellectually honest and nuanced and thinking probabilistically on the one hand and being influential and persuasive on the other hand, those are much more compatible than people realize. So I want to talk about what I think is going on here. It is true that you need to be confident in order to be seen as a leader or an expert, but there are two different kinds of confidence, and I think people are mixing them up or conflating them. So uh, for lack of better terms, I call them epistemic confidence and social confidence. Epistemic confidence is about how much certainty you have in your beliefs. How sure are you, basically? So language like, uh, I'm positive that, or it's definitely the case that, or absolutely not, those are all markers of high epistemic confidence. And then social confidence is about just how self-assured you are. Do you have confident body language and tone? Uh, do you seem to be at ease in groups or you know, speaking to groups? Do you seem to believe that you're worth listening to? Um, do you go out and make things happen and take charge? Those are all examples of social confidence. And these are two different things, and they often go together, but they don't have to go together. And in fact, what matters for being influential and having people you know, look up to you and want to follow you is much more social confidence than epistemic confidence, which is great because you know, if you want to be intellectually honest and, and try to see things accurately and be a scout, then you have to let your epistemic confidence fluctuate with the evidence. I'll give an example. Um, one of the more prominent examples in the book is Jeff Bezos when he was first deciding to start the company that would become Amazon he wanted to be really realistic and clear-eyed about his prospects for success so he thought about it and tried to really estimate what's the chance that this company is going to succeed and his best guess was about 30 percent which he based on the fact that you know he felt like his idea was really good and his skills were strong but the baseline success for companies was more like 10%. And so he's like, I have to adjust upward from there. So that's already kind of an unusual uh, reasoning for a founder to go through. And perhaps even more unusual is that he was very open about his level of uncertainty with his early investors. So in every pitch meeting that he did, he would warn people, look, I think there's about a 70% chance that this is all going to fail and you're going to lose your money. So you shouldn't invest any money that you're not willing to lose. And he continued to be upfront about the uncertainty in Amazon's future in his interviews with the media um, and to his employees. So, for example, if you watch any interviews 
with Bezos from like the late 90s and 2000s, he keeps saying, uh, there's no guarantee that we're going to succeed. What we're trying to do is very complicated um, and it's very hard to predict in advance which companies are going to succeed and which are going to fail, which is all clearly true. Um, and if you're being intellectually honest, then you kind of have to recognize that. But very few founders do because they feel so much pressure to just believe 100% um, in their business or their idea. So, uh, and yet, Bezos was clearly very influential in getting people to invest in him and work for him. And that's because even though he had low epistemic confidence uh, in his business, or low compared to other founders, I think 30% is actually pretty optimistic <laughs> given the base rate of failure of companies, but certainly low compared to how other founders think and talk about their companies. Even though his epistemic confidence was not that high, he had tons of social confidence. Uh, he was you know, high energy and charismatic. He uh, was clearly like, comfortable talking about his business plan and spoke about it smoothly and with ease because he had done his homework on the market. Uh, he was very passionate about the vision that he wanted to create for Amazon, um, which people found very inspiring, even though he wasn't claiming it was a sure bet. And I went through a bunch of the comments, all the comments I could find from early investors in Amazon talking about why they decided to invest. And these are the things that they talk about. And you'll notice that none of these things involve being 100% sure that your idea is going to work. None of them involve you know, overconfidence or over, like overconfidence in the epistemic sense or overpromising or you know, being certain of something that you can't justifiably be certain in. So I think you know, the reason, the reason this is so important to me is that obviously I think scout mindset uh, is very important and valuable, being intellectually honest and recognizing nuance and uncertainty. Um, I think that's valuable, not just for individuals because it improves your judgment, but also for the world. You know, if more people thought that way, I think the world would be a better place. And this is one of the main hangups that I encounter in people about the idea of being more like a scout that they feel like that's going to make them seem weak or wishy-washy or unconfident. Um, and so I'm just so driven to tell people, no, that's, that's actually not true. That trade-off isn't, isn't really there. You can be you know, intellectually honest and think probabilistically and, and be you know, accurately calibrated in your view of the world without sacrificing your ability to be influential and persuasive. Um, you just have to you know, cultivate social confidence, but that doesn't necessarily have to involve deceiving yourself into being certain about things that you can't justifiably be certain in. So uh, I'll stop there for today, but if you find these ideas intriguing, you should check out my book, The Scout Mindset. There's a link in the description. Um, it's coming out April 13th, but you can pre-order it now. And pre-orders are very helpful for authors, uh, so I hope you'll consider that. And uh, I'll do some more videos on other ideas that I talk about in the book. Uh, you should also check out my podcast, Rationally Speaking, and uh, oh, and consider subscribing to this YouTube channel. Uh, that's all for today. I'll see you guys next time.